Hello there, everyone, and welcome to week seven. We have made it. This is the final week for new instruction in phase two, and today I will be taking you through our parent materials guide for this week. Just a note about the following two weeks, we will still be releasing some activities and opportunities to still communicate and engage, so be on the lookout for that. We will continue to communicate through Friday emails to let you all know about those opportunities. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this week's materials and activities. So right here in the language arts block, you will see that we have a reading activity for this week that also talks about poetry, just like we did last week. Last week, we focused on some nonfiction poetry. This week, we're going to focus on some fiction poetry. Mrs. Duke and Mrs. Tafaro have created three different videos that you can watch. In video one, they review a lot of the elements of poetry that you all talked about last week, and they also start to introduce the idea about a narrator in a poem and how we can identify that narrator and use that information to help us better understand the poem. Their second video that you can find here focuses one, on identifying the narrator and talking about the impact of that narrator, but then they also go into author's purpose. Video three dives into identifying the narrator as well, since that is our focus for this week. But then they take a look at that five finger retail strategy that we worked on a few weeks ago and how we can use a poem to complete a five finger retail as well. Feel free to pick and choose which of those videos you would like to watch. However, all four of the poems that we have included here for the, our activity are included in one of these three videos. Batter Up should be in the first video. The Great Horned Owl and For Sale should be in the second video, and The Mysterious Egg should be in the third video. So our activity this week, it says to choose one of the poems below and practice reading it fluently, meaning you're reading it accurately, smoothly, and with expression, making sure that you're paying attention to the punctuation that is in that poem. Keep in mind who the narrator of the poem is and how that might affect how it's read. Maybe it's a child, maybe it's an adult, Maybe it's an animal or even a tree. Think about how that narrator is going to affect how you read the poem and tell the story that the poem is trying to get across. For sharing this week, um, go ahead and post and share a video of your reading and be sure to tell how you thought about the narrator of the poem as you practice. So you can choose one of these four poems to practice over the course of the week and then share a video with us. Now, um, if you choose to watch just one of these videos, but the poem that you'd like to read was not in that video, that is okay. These poems are here for you to use as you would like to. Um, as you can see, moving ahead to writing, we will not have any writing activities this week so that you all can focus on getting these final assessments complete and any other assessments that you need to finish up from earlier weeks. Then as we look into word learning for this week, Ms. Gibaldi has created a video here that you all can watch to review some word relationships. Specifically, she is taking you through the ideas of synonyms and antonyms and how they are connected. So she details how to complete this word pair hunt in her video, where you can use this poem to see if you can find and create pairs of synonyms or antonyms or you can use a text of your choosing to pull out words and then think of their synonym or antonym pairs, but she will talk you through that in her video. Then as we look forward to math, we will be wrapping up our place value unit this week. Um, the parent guardian overview was the same document that was included in last week's parent materials guide. I have included some notes here that talk about comparing numbers and rounding numbers, since that is our focus for this week as well as a two-part video that I created. The first video really talks about a quick review on comparing numbers using a method to stack the numbers based on their place value positions and starts to go over a review of rounding on a number line. Part two of that video focuses on using the more traditional or basic strategy for rounding where we underline the digit, circle its neighbor, and let that tell the underlined digit what to do. So then from there, the only activity we'd like the kids to work on this week before doing our check-in and our assessment is a roll it rounded activity where you can use a dice that you have at home or the spinner that is included in the activity here at this link. 
then you're going to create some four digit numbers and practice rounding those four digit numbers to the nearest 10, 100, and thousands place. Then the kiddos will complete a place value check in and complete that summative assessment that you see here on the screen. I do go over in a little more detail about the check-in and the summative assessment in my video that's included up here. Um, and then as we look ahead, our final social studies unit for phase two is all about civics and government. Mrs. Rotendi has a two-part video going over civics, citizenship, and government. Um, there are some activities here that you can complete that Mrs. Rotendi will talk you through. And then our assessment for this unit is to complete a good citizenship journal with at least three entries. So over the course of the week, think about what it means to be a good citizen and jot down some of the things that you do throughout the week that show how you are a good citizen in your home, in your neighborhood, and community. And that is all we have for you, I believe, this week. You can see that we have two county summative assessments, Anything in yellow, feel free to turn into your teacher for feedback. You've got all of the regular information there. And if you'd like to check out some other poetry websites, we've included some links here. Jack Perletsky is one of my all-time favorite poets. His poems are hilarious and super humorous. So if you'd like a good laugh, definitely check out that website. And then for some extra math practice, we do have a comparing numbers activity here. Um, to review that first skill that I talk about in my video up in the math section. And then there is an additional rounding activity that you can complete. But these are just additional helpful extension resources and are not um, activities that you have to complete for this week. So definitely um, come down here and check out some of those extensions if you're interested. Otherwise, just remember that we have our social studies assessment for civics due this week and our place value assessment due this week as well. And overall, by the end of week seven, your teacher should have all 12 of your county assessments turned in so that we can get those assessed, scored, and into the grade book. All right, we've done it. We've made it to week seven. Best of luck as you move through this final week of new instruction.